The Debonair Club. It's fun and easy to build your wardrobe with our custom clothing service. There's no event that you can't own with a custom suit. Our top priority is to see your confident smile. The Debonair Club. Take the time to dress better. Welcome to Different Thought, where we drop jewels, wear jewels, hope to never run it. With more kicks and a baby in the mother's stomach. If you know, you know. And that right. I'm glad you know. <laughs> I just learned that lyric today. That's what I know. I just learned it. But I'm gonna go do my research after we're done. Glad you know. But shout out to that. Shout out to that. Mo kicks and baby in the mother's stomach. That's tough. What's up everybody? Welcome to Different Thought. With where we examine the culture, I am your host Mike Hayes. And this is my co-host. I'm Jan Ernst. What? Look it up. If you know, you know. Oh, okay. It's okay. relevant. All right. Uh, Look it up, people. As y'all know, that's who was that again? Jan Ernst. All right. That's Jan Ernst. Uh, call me Jay. Or you call me Jay. Uh, okay. Our right, Jay, also known as Justin McBath. Uh, that's our guests will appreciate it. That's too. his government. Uh, <laughs> And as you know, we're on location again. We're here at Free Agency. Uh, is it Shoe Boutique? Is that or is it Free Agency Sneaker Shop? I like to call it a safe haven. Safe haven. All well, right. You, you want to come and talk sneakers. <laughs> you want to come and find the hottest stuff in the city. You know, this is where it's at. And we got, so we got our special guest, uh, Brian Sullivan, also known as Scott. What's your, what's your Scott's 55. Scott's 55, which yeah. I learned today that Scott's 55 is actually an acronym for yeah. Shoe Kings of the South. All right. All right. I hear you. I hear you. So, uh, Brian, you know, tell us a little bit more about the, yourself and the, the shop and everything else. Uh, man, I'm just a guy who loves sneakers. Um, guy who just, you know, I love, really just love sneakers, fashion, you know, sports. I just wanted to be surrounded by it every day. So, you know, we kind of turned our passion into profit. And, you know, Gave the city opportunity to come get some of the hottest things in the world, right here in chat. All right, all right, cool, cool, cool. So how how long the shop been open? Uh, what's today? Be seven months on the eighteenth. Okay, seven cool. months on the eighteenth. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, so as, as usual, we're gonna keep we're gonna keep it moving and do what we usually do. So we start off with our um our hot take segment. Straight like that, baby. Straight like that. Um, so, Justin, I'll let you, or excuse me. Jan. Jan. Uh, Jan you, Ertz. You call I, me Jay. Jan. Okay. okay. Is I'll it let, with an I'll E? Let. J-E? Huh? Is it Jan Ertz with an E? Yeah. Oh, so we call you J-E then? Yeah, you can. Okay. 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 J-E. All right, J. Give you a little spiel. Give you a little spiel. <laughs> no, my hot take, my hot take is actually against myself. My straight like that is against myself. Uh-oh. From black. No, it's, this is a good one. This Uh-oh. is a good okay. one. Okay. From last episode, where I think I said something along the lines of, I called like, I said, like, everybody's like average. Uh, but I didn't clarify it very well because I feel like somebody's gonna be like, well, I'm not average. <laughs> but I look at it like this I think average, when I say like most people are average, it's just like, like, if you look at all athletes as a whole, like, all athletes are average because you got like, because not one athlete is gonna be good at all sports, you know right. what I'm saying? So it's like, you got a football player who's really good at football. He but, everything but he averaging everything else. So I look at it like that. Just know your lane, stay in that lane, and be the best you can be at. Yeah. So what do you say about like Dion and Bo and all those guys? They were they were specimens. They were not they were specimens. They were specimens. By, but they by, still. But I bet they couldn't do gymnastics. Okay. Okay. So it's, it's so sports I'm talking about all home. sports. I'm I got touching, you. Because I look at humanity. Okay. You know, civilization, society, whatever. They still were specimens. They did. No, they no. They were because I thought about that when I thought about that analogy. I was like. There's some, there's some dudes out there, man. It was and as usual, J Mac has made straight like that. I mean, our straight like that segment go longer. My bad. My bad. My bad. <laughs> but that's a good conversation. Just start a whole other conversation. A lot of kids get drafted, you know, into the to play baseball to go play football. You know, yeah. Vic was one of them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Who knows what Mahomes would do? Yeah. If you so, uh, my straight like that is based off of last night's events. Uh, and be adjusted, and I come to this realization: if you have a, if you go into a white party, pack a change clothes. <laughs> because it was just after after the white party, it was like, all right, man, what are we doing next? And everywhere we went, you know, you got that look like, yeah, you out. And then it's like me and Justin kicking it together. We both two black men and 
all white. It's just, it just sometimes it just it stands out. It's, it stands. We went out. on South Beach, so, so we had no excuse. <laughs> so, so no yeah, excuse. man. If you got, if you go to a white party, just pack a change of clothes. Uh, actually, a friend of ours that was out with us, he he did. Yeah, man. Yeah. Shout out to Fred, bro. Play job. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, we, we, he was like, man, I'm here. We showed up. We was like, dang, he changed up. He get a whole other and he, outfit. And he wasn't even like all white, white. <laughs> yeah, there's a white polo with some other stuff on me. I was like, come on, man. All right, Brian, what's your what's your straight like that? <laughs> well, being that you know we are in a sneaker store, I guess I need to keep it sneaker related. <laughs> my hot take is uh, every shoe does not need to be raffled, people. <laughs> That's my hot take. Uh, right. Every shoe is not worth the raffle, you know. Mm. You know, I know that's what the world has come to now, you know, Corona and you're trying to keep everything down. But y'all ain't raffling off felines. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Every shoe ain't every shoe ain't just popping like that, man. I understand everybody got money, PPP loans and stuff like that. <laughs> but everything ain't got to be raffled off. Oh, you you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, let them things, you know, just put them things on the shelf, man. Let, let everybody fight it out. You feel me? Oh, that's my hot take. <laughs> All right. So now we got our take a shot for you, and our take a shot for you is like I, I explained to you earlier. Brian is is basically taking a shot, whether it be good or bad. Uh, you know, it could be you know I want to shout out this person, or it could be man, look, you got me drinking, look, and because you, you got me so stressed out because you doing stupid stuff out here. Yeah. So uh, Justin, I'll let you. Excuse me. It's Je. Je. I'll let you kick it off. Yes. yes, yes. Again. Um. My my take a shot is to my friends for calling me out on my sneaker game because <laughs> I've been slacking for so long. Sneaker. I used to, I used to be into it for a while, and then I, I fell off because it's busy doing other things. So I'm just walking around in vans and all that stuff, just being casual. And I was like, you know what? I need to do something different. And it all just happened just that one time I bought some forces and showed up. And it was like, oh, Jay, I know you. Was, I was like, is it that serious? Apparently, I need to do better. <laughs> so I had to go make sure we get him a pair so, out of so here. So I had. I had. Yeah. <laughs> you came to the right place, man. We're going to help you. So, right. Why? Well, it's a safe haven. All right, Jay. What, what you sipping on, man? I was sipping on Ciroc. You know, uh-uh, uh-uh, uh-uh. Can't stop, won't stop. Can't stop, won't bad stop. Bad boy, bad boy. Press <laughs> <laughs> Love. Nah, shout out to Diddy. Uh, my shot is um, usually I like to try to keep it somewhat somewhat in the in the in the black community, but my shot is out is to uh, Back to the Future. Uh, if it wasn't for Back to the Future and the Marty McFly, uh, the the the, um, Max. the Air Max, I never would have gotten to the sneaker game. That is mm. like my holy grail of shoe. I will never get it because unless I just make millions upon millions, and then they even still, I don't know if I'll pay sixteen thousand dollars. For a pair of shoes, that's just you might. I may though. You, you don't want the auto lace up joints? I, I do. It's one hundred twenty k. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I have yeah. to start low, brother. I I <laughs> so, but yeah, man. Shout out, shout out to Back to the Future, the the directors, the writers for that, because that that shoe kind of changed my my viewpoint on sneakers. And I'm drinking uh, Michael Jordan Sincoro as usual. Y'all know me. I love to. It's either do say or Sincoro, so that's 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 me. So that's definitely my shout. All right, Brian. It's on me. All right. <laughs> We're taking a shot for Kim K today. Shout out to Kim K. You know, uh, she let Kanye free. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I seen what she said on her show about pretty much saying, you know, Kanye deserves someone who can actually support him, move to Wyoming. And I just feel like, you know, it's a big step for her. You know, a lot of women probably, you know what I'm saying, if you ain't supporting your man, you probably need to take the Kim K route. <laughs> so, you know, I'm really, you know, now we got Kanye, he's free. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was saying he was in that sucking place, so he's back out. So, you know, I'm I'm excited. West Day Ever's on the way. That, back in that thing. That, you know what I'm saying? That was my, that was, it ain't going to be what? long. That, I, that I think about, that should have been my straight like that. It's like, not going to be long. I'm, I'm, here for, I'm here for the resurgence of Kanye, yeah, dog. Like, yeah. Like, I feel like when I heard today, I was like, you know what? This, this may be good. I'm glad, y'all, get some are, good I'm glad y'all are hopeful for that. Amen. But. Hey, Hey, but I mean, I, mean, that's I, was, a look, I love Kim Kanye Park. too. But I'm just saying, you know, the, that man was gone long before Kim K came around. <laughs> I don't even. I mean, you know what? I'm, I'm Jay. I'm gonna keep it hundred with you. I don't think Yay was ever gone. Yay been Yay for a minute, I mean, but I mean, now yeah. it's just like I you mean, know. I guess it, take, just... it takes a certain per. It takes a special person to get on national TV doing a disaster and say yeah. the president don't like black people. Yeah. So I mean, you <laughs> had to respect so, it from that. So, end. so for me, so for me, it's like when he started doing all this crazy, and I'm like. Why are y'all surprised, bro? Like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, no, nah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
But yeah. uh, I'm also drinking, uh, <laughs> what's this called? Sincoro. Right. Shout out to the boy Mike. You know, he just put me on. I didn't even know this is a black owned brand. Shout out to Michael Jordan and them. Uh, it's up. I'm drinking the whole thing. All right. All right. And then let's, let's, uh, let's keep this thing moving. Uh, I need to stop saying that. Apparently, people have told me I say that too much. You just got to let it go. Yeah, <laughs> it be you. <laughs> right. Uh, keep it moving. So I wanted to have, uh, I want to kind of kick off this sneaker, sneaker head discussion. Um, I get, we'll start with you, Brian. I wanted to hear like your, 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 a sneaker story, like with the first time you bought Jays or the first time you bought a sneaker, and it, you know, whatever it is, you know, give us your the fondest sneaker head experience you've ever had. We'll go with the uh, the first time I actually bought Jordans with my own money that I actually worked for. All right, so um, this is like 2005. It was actually January, January 2005. I remember. It. Um, so we had a pair of Jordans coming out. And uh, my cousin was getting married, <laughs> and it was two pair coming out that same day. And my mom it was thirteen, I believe. Um, but my mom, she was uh, she was trying to go to the wedding, and this is my t- first time I had got a job. Like you know, it was right after f- football season, my senior year. So I'm clocking mad hours at Sears. Shout out to Sears, you know, I you know miss y'all. But um, yeah, so you know, I got a nice little check, and I had my money together. I was like, yeah, I'm finna go buy both of these. Mom comes to ask me. She's like, hey, you know, trying to get to your cousin's wedding. Uh, you think I can borrow some money? Now, I only had, like, precisely, I think it was, like, 327 because it was 150 back then. So that was everything after tax and stuff like that. So I was like, well, Mom, you know, them Jordans finna come out. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. Like, you know, I got to see what I got going on. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, long story short, I got them Jordans. My mama did make it to the wedding, though, but, you know, she wasn't on the account of me. She made it work. You know, shout out to, you know, all the moms, you know, doing what they got to do to make it happen. But I definitely got my Jordans. And, uh, yeah, I didn't tell her until later, like, what was going on, why I couldn't give her the money. But look at me. Look at me now. Like, you know what I'm saying? She she believed the sacrifice. You know what I'm saying? It, it is what it is. You know, the wedding didn't even, the marriage didn't even last that long. You know what I'm saying? You know. But, hey, we still got the Jordans. You know what I'm still saying? Tim Jays. So, yeah. yeah that's uh, it's one of my most memorable stories, man, for real. All right, Jay, what's your, what's your story? Man, honestly, so so here's the thing. It's what you got to understand. I grew up on a farm in the mud, dirt, and all that type of stuff. So sneakers, for me growing up, was not really something – one, we didn't have the money for a lot of stuff. My mom, she made sure that we had what we needed. But in terms of, like, having sneakers to take care of stuff, like, as an adult, that's the first time I was ever, like, to be able to get out of a car and not have to worry about getting my shoes dirty. <laughs> you know, living living with concrete and asphalt around. But I think my favorite pair of sneakers growing up, I had, uh, honestly, with my FUBUs. Okay. Like, those, like, my first real pair, like, sneakers. I had, like, some FUBUs, and they looked like, they were made to look like a mashup between like forces and like patent leather J's. Mm. So it I was think like I remember, that. I remember yeah, the era. The red, the black, red, black, and white yeah. things. Yeah. So I was like, yeah, I thought I was I thought I was the business back then with some FUBUs. <laughs> FUBU was a good era. Man. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so my story would be, um, I got a ton of stories, so I'll just kick it off with, you know, uh there's a I can't remember the comedian's name, but he said this 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 it sticks hold to me all the time. It was like you ever see a black man out wearing J's? Walk up to him and ask, who hurt you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I know what you're talking about. So, so, you know, my, my, my sneaker experience is built around shoes I couldn't get when I was a little kid. And then it just grew to like, all right, those look hot. Let me get those. So um, uh, my story uh, is about three years. Well, it was three, a little over three years ago now. Um, I just found out I was having a son. And so I was in Houston. I think I was on. I was in Houston on business. I went to go visit a cousin. And we went to a sneaker shop, and that's when I bought my first pair of Yeezys. Uh, so those Yeezys are kind of sentimental because I because I paid way too much for the Yeezys. Like it was a it was an emotional buy. It was way too much. It was way too much. It was looking back because I bought other Yeezys, and looking back, I was like, dog, I spent way. They got. Which one was it? Uh, gosh, uh, it's 
the black ones with the red stripe. Okay. The, uh, 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 Pirate Blacks. Not the Pirate Blacks. Uh, it's like the Pirate Blacks, but it's got the red stripe with the, the black writing. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The ones came out for Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay, I know what you're talking about. It's a V2, though? Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, I, yeah. That core red joint. Yeah, yeah I know what you're like, talking about. Mm. Yeah, like, you probably paid a lot for that. <laughs> it's just like, mm, mm. But, you know, the, the, the moral of the story was it was really because I was celebrating, you know, I, you know, this is the, probably going to be one of the last major purchases of sneakers for me because I went three years before, matter of fact, until your shop opened up. Yeah. I hadn't bought a pair of sneakers since my son was What's born. What's up, man? Shout so. out to Mike. Shout out to <laughs> So, so, nah. So, that, so, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and say uh, my favorite pair would have to be, ooh. Bread Jordan 13s. Yep. That'd be my favorite pair. It's a pair I always wanted when I was in middle school. So. Is that Bread 13? Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's a good pee. Hey, your FUBU, what's your favorite pair? Um, I got too many shoes to choose a favorite <laughs> yeah. pair. I'm not going like to lie. But when I die, the, I'm going to get buried with five pairs of shoes. <laughs> it is um, Yeezy 1, Nets, uh, Sheets, um, I got the the navy blue sheets. Um, it's a it's a pair another pair of Air Forces. It's a navy Carolina low pair of Air Forces. Obsidian twelves, and um, I need I haven't figured out which Dornbecker I'm gonna take to the grave, but it's gonna be one of those though. I have a few that I'm gonna choose, That's but a true yeah. Might as well speak Chinese to me. Sorry, <laughs> Sorry man, we're gonna get you hip. We're gonna like, get you hip, Jay. We're gonna get you right. You know what I'm saying? Cool, man. Uh, uh, <laughs> so uh keeping this moving, man, clearly you have a clear passion. I think this is a a, a a redundant question to you, but I guess I wanted to we want to get more dig deep more into your business. So what made you want to get into the business and what are some of the hardships or lessons that you've learned since you've opened up the shop? Um so I was introduced to the game of hustling <laughs> in Atlanta. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to all my family in Atlanta. Without my family in Atlanta, this wouldn't be here today. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's a few people that did help in Tennessee, but they also from Georgia, too. So we're going to get to that later. <laughs> but uh, long story short, um, I was really just putting all this on, and people were saying it. Hey, where you get that from, B? Where you get that from, B? And I started making phone calls, and we started making it happen. And then, you know, one day my big brother told me, he was just like, you know what, Brian, as much as you work, bro, you should get paid for it. And, you know, it's like, you know what? You're right. So, you know, mm-hmm. I had um, I had one of my guys, you know, we grew up with. You know, he's a very successful person. And he likes shoes. He likes fashion. And uh, his name's Neek. Shout out to Neek. Um, because really, without Neek, you know, I'll probably, he's, he's definitely a big factor of me having this. Because he, he did a lot, opened a lot of doors in the city, personally in the city, you know, for me. You know, so. It was just like, you know, hey, yeah, okay, I got this. Woo, woo, de, woo, woo, de, woo. And, you know, he wanted, you know, like, all right, well, hey, I'll pay you this and we'll go from there. Because, I mean, it was just convenience. So, you know, that just started growing. Then I started getting uh, more people across the world. You know, Nashville, a lot of people in Nashville. Um, I got Josh. You know, he, he would put me out there and let people know, you know, and we'll go from there. And, you know, I started sending stuff everywhere. And it was just like, you know, hey, you know, it just happened. So, you know, Corona hit. Everything got big, plugs never left. It was just like, you know what, it's time. Like, you know what I'm saying, it's time. So me, one of my partners, you know what I'm saying, we went together, we got together and figured it out. You know, because I a lot of people don't believe this, but I feel like Chattanooga has one of the best sneaker cultures in the world, and I'll stand by that. You know, every time a shoe comes out here, it's gone. And I don't think it's just because it's minimal amounts. I think it's because... The people in the city really like their shoes, really Mm -hmm. like fashion. Like, you know, we really like looking good. I think it's a big thing. Like, you know, when I was growing up, that was one of the things, you know, you want to be fresh, you want to be seen, like your shoes. So, and that's that's really what happened. Yeah, I remember those days. Yeah. Like, you know, event event was about to happen. Everybody hit up a... Detour. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. (laughs) Get your your, your gear right and come on out. Um. I will say this. I mean, <clears throat> one thing I love about this shop is that, you know, there have been other shops that have opened up in, in Chattanooga, and no, no disrespect to them, but one thing I can't, one thing I remember is, is uh, when I came in this shop, it was all love from the jump. 
Mm-hmm. And so that will make me like, you know, I, I tell him all the time when I come here, I can't leave without buying something. You know what I'm saying? Because I, 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 I keep the lights on. Why <laughs> keeping the lights on, y'all? So, I, I, I was, messed up since we walked in the door. I was like, no. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, I, you know, I have to do that right? too. Now, when I walk in, when yeah. I, when I, you know, Mike love pizza, so we always pick a pizza up over here. Yeah. Uh-huh. And so I always, and I'd be like, I can't walk in there, dog. Cause yeah. I'm going I'm to buy like, something. No, man. I don't need to I'm do gonna this. I'm going to be broke. So, you know. Um, I think that's something that I kind of like, I strive on. Like, I don't want you to walk in the store and just expect like I'm just here for you to sell stuff like no I'm here really like kind of to restore the love and the you know back to the culture like it's kind of you know it's been we'll get to that 10,000 situation (laughs) later but you know it's just I want people to understand like you know the real situation and yeah you know a shoe might cost this much here and it costs this much there but I mean that's just the market right now but that don't mean that you can't come in here we have a full genuine conversation about sneakers like honest truth I'm open seven days a week and seven days a week, you can come in here, we can talk sneakers. I don't care. As long as I'm open, we can come in here and talk sneakers. You don't have to buy a single thing from me. Like, you know, let's if you want to just come in and talk sneakers, then I think that's that's my thing. I want to get back to, like, you know, the whole love of the game. Like, you know, I know it's tough now because you don't have those stories like you did back in the day, like, you know, with Jordan or with Iverson or with Kobe or, you know, Kanye or, you know what I'm saying? But – we can still talk sneakers. Like, let's talk about it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Let's let's do those things. Like, you know, let's let's revisit this. Let's say, oh, I like how this color was, or whatever. Woo de woo. Like, you know, let's let's do that. We can we can always reminisce in here. And I t- I say this, and this is for any uh, up and coming entrepreneur that wants to get into any game of entrepreneurship or any facet of it is especially when you're getting into consumer relationship. You know, I think you got the the, the key point is that you you got to be able to be Facts. And so, you know, one thing, and that's why I say, like, I come in here and I feel like, you know, I feel like it's a long lost cousin I ain't talked to in a while, and just like, all right, man, we we shoot, go back and forth, and then it's like, all right, let me let me let me not only buy something, let me make sure I bring others to 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 your business because I want everybody. I tell everybody I work with, you know, uh, especially like, uh, and I didn't do this in the beginning. Uh, shout out to ESL uh, Clothing. Um, got a slogan out here real is rare so this fits into this um and you know uh i tell them tell uh kevin and uh john from davenir club you know sell the experience sell the experience you know it ain't about like that's kind of why i wanted to open up with the you know tell me about your your fundest sneaker story because it's not just about the sneaker it's about man the experience i had when i came and bought the sneaker and i remember what happened and what, what was going on at the time and the conversations I had, you know, I can sit here and talk about all the sneakers. I, there's a story behind, I got 40 pair of sneakers, 40 plus pair of sneakers in my house, and I got a story for all of them. And it's, mm. it's, it's a funny story. And I think that's that's what the lost art is. You know, nowadays, stories like mine are popping up everywhere. But yeah. the difference between free agency and any other store in the world is they don't have the knowledge. We was in them streets. Yeah. Like, you know, I got people that, hey, we was in them streets. Like, you know what I'm saying? From from 03 to now. Like, we was in them streets. Like, you know, heavy, tough, camped out 17 plus hours in front of stores getting shoes. Like, you know, I promise you, you know, I ain't going to say you nothing that I ain't going to wear. You know what I'm saying? And if a size 11 ain't available in my stores, because I got it. You feel me? And that's just, that's just <laughs> that. Like, you know, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a money chase for me. I love the game. Like, you know what I'm saying? I love the hustle. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Peyton Fool. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I just love the shoes, and I want to provide people with the opportunity to get the stuff that I can get. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? You, this is some some stuff we have in here. Like, perfect example, man. We got them off-white fours, the MCAs right there. Everybody come in and call them little babies because little baby had them on in a uh, magazine. Oh, yeah. But, you know, this is not something that you'll just think you can walk in somewhere and see and chat. Like, you know, that, that's what I'm saying. Like, you know, that's I, I, that's what I provide. I video bad Kyle. Uh, shout out to Eve and Oz. He came in and when you put the uh, Kathy Jackson out there, he was like, dang, I didn't even know he had this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and it's all authentic, by the way. I just want to let y'all know everything <laughs> here is real. So, you feel me? So, so, I mean, that's just the difference, man. It's not a, you know, some stores, you know, they open up because they see it's a, a campaign to make money. So with this, with this talk about the the, the sneaker shops, man, I, 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 it's a perfect segue into the sneaker culture and its impact on the black community because 
that's kind of what we're talking about right here. You know, we got the stories and things of that nature. I guess give your uh, J.E., you hadn't spoken in a while. Give Look, your perspective. I'm, I'm letting y'all. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, go ahead. Give your perspective on, like, the sneaker culture and its effect on, uh, and then we'll get to you, Brian, mm. and its effect on the black community. Like, what do you see? Because you got a very different perspective than us because, yeah, yeah, you, you like you said, you grew up on the farm, but you were just like, I don't yeah, know. Yeah, it didn't, it, didn't, it didn't mean that much to me. Yeah. You know, that wasn't. Yeah. I guess I look at it, I look at sneakers like a form of currency. Mm -hmm. So for me, not growing up with, with that as an exchange tool, it like seeing people when they, when I guess, when I started being around more people that look like me and realizing like the things that they were wearing, the fashion, all that type of stuff, to me it was like, I don't need that to be happy or to be successful. And you know, that's that, it didn't register with me. I understand it much more now as I've gotten older and experienced more things. But at the time, like getting the UTC, it was like, I was like, I was like, this ain't, uh, this doesn't, it's like, okay, all right. I don't, I don't need like to wear high fashion shoes. Like I don't have to have J's. I still, I only own one pair of J's and, which and I just got, <laughs> which one is that? The, what is the, the, the one? ones, Arctic, Arctic orange one. Um, but yeah, it just doesn't. It didn't mean much to me in terms. So, in, and I look at it in terms of the black community. I look at it just like that—a form of currency, a way to exchange goods and services, really. And but I don't know if my question's always been: Do people put too much value on them? Because like people die for shoes, so it's like, but people die for money at the same time. So it's like trying to look at it and understand it from that perspective. It's just kind of like you know how much value do you put on on this particular thing? So I, I've definitely come to more of an understanding um, now than I did then. Cause I was like, I don't, I don't need J's. Like why, why is it a big deal? Hey man, you got some J's. No, I don't. <laughs> I don't, I don't care to have them either. <laughs> I'm gonna get them dirty. Like that's what I thought. I was like, I'm yeah, gonna get these yeah, dirty. Yeah, so yeah. it doesn't matter. I, I definitely understand. I definitely understand what, what you're saying. What about you, Brian? What's your thoughts on that, on this discussion of sneaker culture's impact on the black community? I mean, and, personally, and I feel like it goes hand in hand. Like, I mean, you know, you really look at it. Black culture is sneakers. Sneakers is black culture. Mm. You know, coming up, who was really buying the Jordans? Who was really buying the shoes? Us. The, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we was. Like, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't until there was a monetary value put on sneakers to where you, you know, have a, a black market that people were really buying the Jordans and stuff like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Until it became cool and crossed over into commercial America. Like, I, I think, I think, the, I think, for me, it's kind of the reverse. It's like, what the effect on it? What did black... It's, it's one of those, how black culture affects the world. Oh, facts. Because for me, it's, you know, we we kind of knew about these things as a black as black folk and knew about what, what was dope. And we all, you know, black is dope. I, I feel like that all the time. So we actually knew about all this stuff. And, and, and so when we said it was dope, then everybody else was like, yeah. oh, let's, let's... And it's so funny because... I have a, a, a friend of mine, shout out Chris Leeper. Uh, he's also a frat brother of mine, and he works for Nike now. He was like, man, you'd be surprised you get to Nike. And he was like, in his mind, he thought it was going to be a bunch of, like, hip black dudes. He's nope. like, man, it ain't nothing. Nope. He's like, it's geeks. A whole bunch it's of all, lab rats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is, it, and it's like, but then they be talking about the culture and stuff, yeah. and he just be looking at them like, he said, he, he be sitting to me, and it's like, wow, how is it? Yeah. it, it it's 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 a culture shock in a way because those are the people kind of putting out what what we we're we're we're, we're consuming at the time yeah. at right now, and you know they're really not, you know they didn't come up in that era. They're not but, tapped in, bro. But they tap they tapped in enough to know okay, I you know, yeah. I, I put yeah. a couple 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 of the right people around me. They're gonna keep me. It's gonna keep everything yeah, moving. Well, sure. like I always tell you, man, black black is not a color; it's a culture. I mean, yeah, and you can learn a culture. Yeah. You can't you can't. I learn a skin tone, yeah, but you yeah, can learn right. a culture. Definitely, yeah, right. definitely right. for sure. Um, so I guess I guess we'll get into the different thought. So my my different thought kind of ties all this whole conversation in is is that in today's society we uh, we have a heavy influence from the sneakerhead culture and hip hop, where uh, we are seeing urban culture reach new heights in which it has begun to cross over into places where we would never imagine it to just decade just a decade ago even still. Mm -hmm. uh, with that being said, is the culture being pimped for profit, or have those seeking capital gain lost the very essence of what the sneaker game, what made the sneaker game so dope to average sneakerheads? 
should we be more protective uh, of the piece of our uh, should we be more protective of this piece of our culture? Sorry. <laughs> um, and, I, and I'll go ahead and kick this off. So yeah, this re- is, where I came up from this question, this 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 discussion was um, Chris Leeper, the dude I told you worked at Nike. He was talking about like, and I didn't think about this. He was like, you know, you got Jays in golf now. And I was like, that's, that's, is that, in my mind, I'm like, that's dope. But then he was like, but what they're doing, he was like, but you don't see what they're doing. They're trying to bring more culture, more of our culture into golf. So what they've been doing is, is they've been reaching out to certain golfers that play certain hip hop songs and do this and, uh, and, you know, and make them a part of our spokesperson and give them a, the, the Jordans and thinking like that'll bring black people to the, to the thing. And I think what's being missed there is it's not, you know, everybody want to be like the NBA because, you know, black folks gravitate to the NBA, but why? It's because it's, it's, it's accessibility, mm-hmm. you know. It don't take much to go out to a, a court, right. a blacktop, and yep. play basketball. Yep, that's right. Uh, and do all that stuff. To play golf? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I play golf. So, I, you yeah, know. I only did it one time. And, and, so, and so I know golf clubs, expensive. You know, get, yeah. you know, getting the teeth, it's, 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 it's a different culture. And so you can't just play, put hip hop on it, over it, and, and show a guy shoot, shooting, and then show Tiger Woods, mm-hmm. and then think you just, everybody gonna gravitate towards it. Mm-hmm. You know, and so, and that's kind of where I was getting at with that question is, you know, should we be more protect, protected? Because now it's kind of, in my opinion, things like that are getting pimped out because, oh, this is how we're gonna get black people to come. And it's like, no, you, you're missing the point. You should be doing more. Um, you should be doing more camps and more more things in the community to teach kids about golf and giving out clubs and then letting them go golf. You know, if you putting the Jays on it, you putting Jays on it and playing a J Cole record don't make. Don't, don't mean it's just, you know what I'm saying? That's so, North Carolina for you, right there, boy. <laughs> you got some Jays on with some so J Cole playing. What, what do y'all think? Uh, I mean, <laughs> it is getting pimped out. Like I'm not gonna lie, it's pimped out. I hate it. But you know it's um uh, it's commercialized now. Like yeah. you know when I see sports centers covering sneakers more than they are covering sports, yeah. it's a problem for me. Yeah. Like you know what I'm saying. I think that's one of my biggest problems right now. But at the same time, you know unless we, you know, the community, the sneaker community, sneaker culture actually goes back and does that, like to 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 start you know covering it like we used to back in the day you don't even see blogs for real no more yeah. like you know what i'm saying like and i just think we got to get back to it like it's funny, you know it's funny you say that because it's just like uh you know i think me and you both lebron fans for sure and so <laughs> like uh, it's in <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so the crazy part of it is is like you know when space jam came out the original yeah Nobody was like, let me see. I can't wait to see what the shoe is going to be. Right. Now, uh, the Space Jam, his Space Jam came out. Everybody was like, I wonder. What, because Space Jam shoe did change the game. My, the, the, the 11s did change the game. But it, it then when you saw LeBron's shoe, it was kind of like, ah, it ain't the 11s. I like the shoe. I, I mean, I like I the shoe. I, you know. I like the shoe. I just don't it, don't. it didn't have the same, like, I, because, it, because you true. wasn't looking for it. True. But at the same time. You have to look at it like shoes run the world now. Mm-hmm. So it's different back then when that Space Jam was, you know, when Space Jam came out, it was just Space Jam. Like yeah. nobody else. Yeah. It was not a single another yeah. shoe. Yeah. Nowadays, you got LeBron's, you got Jordan's, you got Yeezy's, you know, you got all this other yeah. stuff. Like, you know, we got PPP loans out here now. <laughs> so everybody buying designer, you know, so you got Virgil doing his thing at Louis. <laughs> And stuff like you know, so it's 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 uh it's very saturated. Yeah. You know what you're I'm right. saying? You're so, right. you know, when we were kids back when that movie came out, you know that's all we had. But now you got so much stuff. You got releases from back in when we was kids, bro. You got Jordans twice a month, yeah, twice a month. Did. Now you get Jordans twice a week. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. How is a guy supposed to survive with a Jordan coming out twice a week? Yeah, a right. week. Well, I mean, it, it goes back to, like, like I said, it's the, 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 the kind of the pimping of it. It's definitely they were like, pimped. man, these folks buy shoes. So yeah. we need to keep, we, we need to take the mass appeal approach and just for flood sure. the market. For flood sure. Flood the market. For you sure. Know? And if, if all of them for don't sure. sell, at least when they sell, we're going to make money. So. Yeah, shout out to No Limit. Too, <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? 
I like how you plug that in. <laughs> no limit. We ain't buying no Master P shoes right now, though. You know what I'm saying? The Manyatis, you know what I'm saying? But shout out to Master P, though. Yeah. So, great, perfect that you mm. said that because, you know, part, the other part of the quote, uh, conversation was, you know, why don't we support our, our black-owned sneaker brands? Like, say, for instance, Rock Deep. Shout out to Rock Deep because... When we first, when I first started the podcast, I think I shouted out one time, and they actually replied back to us. So definitely shout out to Rock D. Uh, but brands like that are ninety, uh, ninety nine, or or uh, ML uh, Neat Design Studio. Why don't we? I feel like, and I'm just as guilty as this, for this because I mean I got my J's on right now. But those are the brands that are really for us and by us because they <laughs> they started. They, you know, they 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 started by themselves. They don't have the big machine behind them, as I like to call it. And so, why why do you think that we don't uh, we don't support those brands? And oh, we should be should we be doing a better do- job of supporting those brands? And I I'll let you go, Justin. Cause, I mean, excuse me, Jay, because you've been quiet. Jan, Earth, yeah, you skipped you skip me on the last one. So okay, I mean, well, well, get you. No, get no, you no, good. No, it, it, all, it, no, it all it all it, it, all, it all fits together. It all fits together. No, I mean in terms of. You know, culturally being pimped out, I mean, it's just like anything else that's created in, in black culture um, because of our position in society as a whole. You know, we're forced to be these creators, entertainers and all that stuff because society doesn't push us to be engineers and doctors like, you know, or we don't. And, you know, for various reasons. And so. People will realize that, you know, people in those positions that have capital eventually going to recognize because everybody's just seeking out how can I make more money mm-hmm. so you got a you got 14 percent of the population and then look at the rest of the world it's like dang most of the people on the world are brown and black mm-hmm. so yes. it's just a, it's just another element of that and then America we're good at like our greatest export in America is hip-hop and R&B yeah. really and you know from a black entertainment perspective so anything we do that create like all sneaker culture is it's just part of the hip hop culture yeah. like, like we talked about. So it's just like it's just like the offshoot like Marvel. Now we got we got Loki and WandaVision and <laughs> Captain Falcon or uh, Falcon that went to Disney Plus. <laughs> yeah. uh, correction is not no longer Falcon, he is Captain America. Yes. Keep yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about the show name. But uh no, but no, yeah, it's, it's Captain America. Okay, un- uh, understand. Show. White Wolf. We gonna call <laughs> yeah. White yeah, the White Wolf, wolf right. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So it's just like it's kind of like I look at it like that. It's just like these offshoots of a greater culture, and then it's just like how do you monetize that? So in my opinion, it's like is it being pimped? Yeah, but it's just not. It's no different than anything else that people that people consume. So the the real issue, the real question is, is like how to how do we take a position in that? So it's like when I look at like sneaker culture and starting to get into it and like the stock X and all that type of stuff and really seeing how shoes are being used as a form of currency and, and true exchange. That's how we got to take a stake in it. You know, and people really got to understand the true value of what they and, have. And that kind of goes back and Brian, I'll let you get your spiel, but it kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier with why, why we, we should be supporting more of these, these, you know, rock deep brand. Like it should be, it should be a famous basketball player. Like, you know, I love LeBron, but a part of me is like, "Hey man, leave Nike and go, go, go get with a black owned because your name alone is gonna yeah. sell." Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you know what I'm saying, and and I think that's part of what you're saying is we gotta tap into that and say we got our own here yeah. and we'll build the, the brand that yeah. way. But I, I get it, man. Everybody, everybody wants to make money. It's at the end of the day. So you're right. So Brian, what, what you what you got? I mean, my thing when it comes to. Uh, I guess black owned sneaker brands. What are you doing to to get your brand out there? Why do we wear Nike? The marketing, yeah, right? Yeah. You didn't say marketing, yeah, right? Just, you, but but oh, perfect example. You wore Fubu, right? Yeah. Why did you wear? Why did you choose that Fubu? Shirt? It was it was marketing. Fubu had one it of the was, greatest it was, marketing. It was, in, it was in your face. One of the greatest marketing ever. Marketing runs ever. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Ever. That, that Shout out. The yeah. Gap Fubu commercial. Yeah. <laughs> then you even had, you <laughs> know, the, the Cosby Show, Gap, Fat like, Album. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's it's to me, it's marketing. To me, you know, and then, like, you know, even like you said about uh, LeBron, I can't knock LeBron for, for getting a billion dollars from nah, Nike. No, by no means. And, and I guess I look at it like this, like, you know, okay, yeah, Nike is the brand. But if LeBron is the shoe, is it not still a black shoe? 
I mean, it is, but well, it's it, hold, hold on. It's all about ultimately. It's all about where those dollars end up at the end of the line. So, like, say if it's Nike, like, imagine if instead of Nike being located in Oregon, yeah. it was located in like the middle of Mississippi. Okay. Okay. Well, it's in Memphis. So the Nike, yeah. the, the the Nike distribution uh, plant is in Memphis. So, so, so those dollars, the people that are actually doing the work, and those dollars they're they're going to, if the people primarily of are of the culture of black culture black people and minorities in general does it really matter i mean i hear you i hear you I, 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 but my my rebuttal is always you know if if lebron got a billion how much you think nike making off of lebron i mean sure yeah for sure so, and so how much could that because because you just you know this um i'm more about equity over the equality and so part of that and so part of that equity to me is is that you know like if you understand your full, because this is why one of my favorite athletes, Mayweather, and you know he, this is why he's hated because he's like, I don't need y'all. Uh, I don't know if you watched the last press conference that he did after his fight with uh the the YouTube sensation. Yeah, one of them Paul brothers. Yeah. and he and he walks up to the table and he was like, did they pay me? And they were like, I don't oh, know. Yeah. He's like, can't oh no, they can't, they can't, they can't they sit can't. on the table yeah. if they didn't pay. Yeah, yeah. Me. And, and and that's it. But people, but that gets vilified. Mm-hmm. It's for, from a black man's perspective, it's like when you say, "I'm not. Uh, uh, I know my worth, and I'm not going to let you pimp me to to make make your make you a name." Nah, and, and like that man said when they were trying to interview him, he was like, "I made thirty million before I even walked into place because yeah. I had three patches on my shorts. I made thirty million. Yeah. And so, and, and so to me, is is that brand of thinking of, hey, if you making, if I make a billion off of it, how much you make? Because you, I want your pocket. I don't, I, I don't, I don't, yeah, you know, cause, it's because always better to you, own the dirt. You, you, it's always you, better to own you, the dirt. You're you, right. You making money off of me. And so therefore I'm like, why not bring that into one big family, like group get economics and say, we can, we gonna all break bread and make money together I agree. and say, and say, you know, we don't need y'all. Yeah. And I think that's the issue is sometimes we think, oh, we need you. Well, it's just and the marketing, of- as far as the marketing goes, that's why I get back to the machine in it is that the, when you got a big machine, marketing is a lot easier than, uh, than other yeah. things. And like, it's for me, and I'm sure you got this, you see this as an entrepreneur, like with this different thought brand that we trying to uh, launch and stuff, it's hard because I'm like trying to come up with content for the show. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of t-shirt designs. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to make sure we sell the t-shirt designs. Mm-hmm. I'm try- and we got, we have a team, but it's still like, I have so much other going on. Time. And when you got, but and I'm saying when you got all of us coming together, like you got marketing firms out there that are black owned, you have all this other stuff that can all work together, and we all working together. I don't have to worry about the content because I mean I don't have to worry about the marketing because I, and I can concentrate on content and make myself better. You gonna do your marketing and make yourself better and look better, and everybody wins. Everybody makes money. So that's all I'm saying is that because they gonna come, they tap back into us when it comes to marketing and be like, all right, oh for sure, yeah. So for sure. so so but nah, yeah, uh, but. You know, I, and I get it. it. It is marketing. Marketing is the biggest, the biggest part of it all. You know, everybody knows. Everybody remembers the the basketball commercial where they sit there dribbling the basketball up to a beat. Yeah. <laughs> you know, everybody remembers the Penny Hardaway uh, commercial. I got a basketball shoes. Yeah, yeah. like the little Penny. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, everybody remembers all that stuff. So it'd be, it, I I get it. Uh, I guess last closing comments. Last whatever y'all want to get out. Before we move on to our before I eat, before you eat segment, so uh, we'll let Je- we'll let Jay E go first. Yeah, we'll let, and then, we'll okay. let Brian close it out. And then we'll let Brian close it. Like out. I think, ultimately, I think you know, with the decentralization of a lot of institutions, I think things like particularly black culture were able to monetize it a lot more than say a decade ago. And granted, you do have the established Nikes, Adidas, and all those things that are just there. And that's that's your infrastructure. So that, that's really what it is. It's the infrastructure that you're trying to take advantage of. So it's easy. Like if Mike says, I want to design a shoe, like would it make more sense for Mike to try to build a total infrastructure with marketing campaigns and all this type right. of stuff? Or right. just say, I'm going to design a shoe and sell it to Nike. Yeah. My name is still getting out there as Mike Hayes shoe, but they got the infrastructure to do all the other stuff. So that's yeah. the question that you always have to ask, because I think you can do anything given enough time. But how much time you got? How much energy you got? Or I can just walk down the street and be like, "Hey, Mr. Nike." So, 
So it's funny. Pay me my billion dollars for, for my design because you like it. So it's funny you say that because everybody knows the infamous houseway uh, clip. Houseway. But that's exactly what Kanye was getting at. It's like, yeah, it, it'd be great to go out and do it on my own. Yeah. But at the same point in time, they got everything. They, but just pay me what you owe me. Yeah. So exactly. I, pay, and, 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 but you gotta and, know. You gotta know your, your worth. worth. And, and and I'm on both sides of that. Like I feel like yeah, we should be able to walk into the store. But I'm also like, man, we could do so much more if we just build together. Yeah. So, yeah. Kevin, I mean Kevin. And I think. Ryan. And I think that's <laughs> happening. I think we're seeing that happen. This in is real a perfect time. example right here. Yeah. Right now we have two Nikes or a Jordan and a Nike right here in front of us. Travis Scott, a Virgil Abloh. Two black guys, right? Mm -hmm. Two two black mm -hmm. successful black men in America on some Nikes. You know, are these are these black owned shoes? Or are they Nikes? Right. I mean, you know, it's it's that's just what you choose. Yeah. I mean, you know, these are both sought after shoes. You know, by people in the world. Yeah. And you know, designed by black guys. Yeah. Right. And then those dollars get kicked back to them, and they can do things yeah. in the community. You know, yeah, Nike still has no, to, yeah, to build out yeah, their infrastructure. Yeah. I, I mean, by, look by at, no means I understand. Yeah. Like you know. It's kind of like, uh, was it uh, one night in Miami when, uh, uh, what's his name? I still gotta the watch singer. Uh, Sammy Day? Sa uh, no, uh, no. Sam Cook. Sam Cook. When he was talking about, like, you know, I, I want to do those things, but, you know, this is kind of what the market is asking for. Yeah. But, and then, but what but he, am I doing? He's building that capital. building that he's capital. Building that building capital, capital so, up yeah. so he can be no, independent. I, I, and, I, and I get it. And, you know, you never know. Brian builds all this with Nike, and Brian gets in the league, and they start their own business. You know what I'm saying? I mean, most likely. I mean, so we Kobe gotta, was about to branch off, you know, they got the Kobe situation yeah, right now. Yeah. So, you know, that's one of those situations that, you know, they said before he died, Kobe was about to leave Nike and, you know, form his own mama brand. So, I mean, you know, it's not to say that you have to go gun ho black on business. Yeah. You got to crawl before you walk. Yeah. yeah. You no, know, no, look no, at no. Ye. Yeah, yeah. Look and that's what I was going to say, like, Ye, you know, people that don't, the reason I like Ye is, one, he knows his worth. But the other thing I love about him is he did the work. Did like the work. he learned how to stitch. He learned how to how the game works from from the ground level. The man was an intern at um. It was, uh, uh, he did Louis Vuitton. Yeah, I think it was Louis Vuitton. He did, he was an intern. Uh, but anyway, yeah. The fact is, he was in, he was willing to at the height of his career, like and, you know, at the peak, he was like, all right, I'll I'll just go in here like a. Intern and he's learn gonna be, the He's going to be a freshman all over. Yeah, and yeah. so mm. and so that it, and it was college that, dropout. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 <laughs> see what she did there. So, <laughs> see what she did there. Graduated. So, <laughs> so right. before we get into our before you eat segment, um, I wanted to uh, take this time to once again shout out free agency. Appreciate y'all having us. Man, here. Appreciate y'all. Uh, <laughs> you know what I'm and saying. Then, and then also I wanted to uh, shout out uh, ESL Clothing Brand, ESLClothingBrand.com. Go check them out. ESL. Uh, clothing on Instagram, uh, go check them out, and definitely go check out Davenir Club. Take the time to dress better. You know, the, those are our two uh, bigger, uh, big, big sponsors. Mm -hmm. uh, been with us, rocking with us since day one. Um, and with that, uh, we'll get into this before you eat. So, Brian, I mean, just to give you a little backstory, before you eat, uh, growing up as a child, when I came to the dinner table, um, me and my sister, our parents would made us come to the dinner table with a Black History fact. And it couldn't be like just a regular old, you know, Martin Luther King did this or whatever. It had to be something you had to go do a little research on. So in trying to bring my roots into this show, uh, I call uh, I I have I end every show with the before you eat segment, which is also spells by. So it, it, okay, it, I see what you're saying. It, so in essence of the our sneaker discussion today, our before you eat segment is on the most iconic one of the most iconic Jordans and movies uh, that made its premiere on. Um, most of you probably think, uh, most of you stickerheads probably thinking uh, the Jordan 11s are the Space Jams, but not, that's not the movie I'm talking about. Uh, the year was 1989, and, a well, uh, and well before the iconic Space Jam movie was made, there was a movie made by the, uh, by the incredible director, Spike Lee, which in that movie, the Jordan 4 was unveiled. Y'all know the name of the movie? Do the Right Thing. All right, Do the Right Thing. So Do the Right Thing. Is a <laughs> is a eighteen excuse me, I keep saying eighteen nineteen eighty nine American <laughs> comedy drama film produced written and directed by Spike Lee. Uh, it starred Lee Danny Leo, uh, Ruby D, Samuel L Jackson, and it was the feature um, 
It was a feature film debut for Martin Lawrence and Rose Perez. Uh, the, the story explores Bro- the Brooklyn neighborhood simmering racial tension, which culminated in a tragedy and violence on a hot summer day. The film was a critical and commercial success and received numerous accolades, including Academy Award nominations for Best Original Screenplay and Best Supporting Actor for Emilio's portrayal of, and I just it's a yellow. His, it's a I yellow. just jacked his a name, yellow. A yellow. A yellow. A yellow. Sal. A, just say a Sal. yellow Sal. portrayal Sal. of Sal and the, pre- <laughs> the pizzeria owner. Uh, it is often listed among the greatest films of all time. 1999, the film was deemed culturally, historically, and aesthetically significant by the Cong- by the Library of Congress in its first year of eligibility and was selected for preservation in the National Film Register. And as always, you know, uh, uh, Brian brought it up earlier. It's like, did, did um, she's got to have it come before um, do the right thing? No. Which I'm it's not a sure. On that, Black. But this, but this, but it goes in. It fits into what I always tell people at the end of this is. You know, go do your research. Go look more into it. Look it up. That's what we want to do. We want to uh, start the conversation. So, as <laughs> always, family, I challenge you to think, do, be different. Thank you for listening to Different Thought Podcast.